In this video, we're going to look at the concept of half-life. And half-life is an applied concept related to integrated rate laws. So in the integrated rate laws, we saw that we can develop an equation where we can figure out the concentration of A at any given time as long as we know the rate constant K and the initial concentration. And we can do that for zeroth, first, and second order. Now with half-life, what we're looking at is that exact same concept except we're looking at a very specific amount of time and that is the time it takes to lower the concentration of A to one half of the initial concentration or A0. So why do we care about one half of the initial concentration? Well this is sort of a good round number. Um, generally speaking one half of the initial concentration would be something relevant to things like radioactive decay or uh, another really important one for the people who are interested in going to medical school is for drug dosage. So, you know, knowing the half-life or about how long it takes for half of a, of a medication to degrade in the body is important, both for therapeutics, meaning, you know, you want to know roughly how long it takes to get rid of um, a medication in terms of toxicity, but also in terms of making sure that you can maintain a therapeutic level of a medication in the bloodstream. And this gives you, the half-life basically gives you kind of a uniform picture of that because you can compare half-lives from one medication to another and you kind of get the same exact um, idea, how much it takes, how much time it takes to get to one half that initial concentration. So let's look at how we can derive an equation for half-life for first order. And first order we're going to see is kind of a very important one. So for the first order integrated rate law, we have that the ln of the concentration of A at time t is equal to minus kt um, plus the ln of A zero. Now if we reorganize this a little bit, what we can do is we can plug in that the ln of a at time t is equal to a0 over 2. Um, so at, at half-life, at t1 half, um, we have that the concentration of a is one half of its initial concentration. So we can substitute in that um, ln of a at t is actually equal to the ln of concentration of a0 divided by 2 is equal to minus k. And at this time, this will be the t1 half. So we put in t1 half plus the ln of a0. And now we got to do some log rules. So if we um, if we want to get t1 half by itself, we can subtract ln of a0 from both sides. And if you remember your log rules, what you basically get is we can break this down a little bit. So from log rules, we can say that this is the ln of a0 minus the ln of 2 minus the ln of a0. And what I'm doing is, is I'm breaking that 2 out of the ln. And if you remember, anything on the bottom of a natural log can be rewritten uh, as a subtraction of that as, an L, of, as a natural log. So we get ln of a0 minus ln of 2 minus the ln of a0 is equal to minus kt1 half. And so the ln of a0, we're going to subtract ln of a0 from ln of a0. That's going to go to 0. So we get minus the ln of 2 is equal to k minus kt1 half. And so we can say that um, the t1 half is equal to the ln of 2 over k. And if you take the ln of 2, you get the, a value of 0 0.693 over k. So the ln of 2 is a fixed value. You can plug that into your calculator so you get 0 0.693 over k. Now what's really interesting about this in first order, the first order, the half-life does not depend on a0. So our half-life equation for this, t1 half is equal to uh, the ln of 2 over k, the only thing that the half-life depends on is the rate constant. ln of 2 is a constant and k is the rate constant. So from this we can see that the half-life is a fixed value and it doesn't matter how much a0 you start with. Whatever it is, whether it's 1 molar or 10 molar, the amount of time it takes to get to half of that amount is going to be the same. So let me show you a couple of sort of outcomes of this um, and we can take a look at a graph. So if we have our concentration of A0 up here, this is where we start, 
and we draw a exponential curve and this is time over here so this is time in seconds and this is concentration of a0 and this is in molar and that's our concentration of a0 and you'll notice that I don't put anything for the concentration of a0 it could be any value uh, it doesn't really make a difference let's look at what happens when we go from you know the to the from to the first half life and then to the second half life and then to the third half life and see what happens so at about half of a0 that's going to be somewhere over here we can measure over and look at the amount of time so we can drop a line down where we get to one half a0 and this is going to be our first half life so our first half life is going to be this amount of time let's just say that that's 10 seconds just pick a number it doesn't matter what it is it could be 10 seconds it could be 10 hours it doesn't really matter but what's going to be interesting is is what happens when we do this again so when we go to the second half life if we go from if we want a half a half that would be a quarter so if we go to one fourth a zero and we track that over on the graph we're going to get another amount of time and what you're going to notice is that this is going to be at 20 seconds now this is going to be the second t one half so each time we go 10 seconds we're decreasing our concentration by half and you can see that again if we go to one eighth a zero down here and we draw that across and we go down we get a just a, we get exactly the same distance so now at 30 seconds we're going to be at one eighth so for each increment where we half the concentration we are going to get the same amount of time so t one half does not depend on a zero in this case and so this a zero could be anything from one molar to a thousand molar not that that would ever be the case but it doesn't matter what it is it's always going to be the same concept as you decrease that concentration by a half it's going to be the same amount of time which is the t one half and that's going to be ln of two over k so this increment over here in time is going to be ln of two divided by the rate constant okay so let's compare this to something slightly different let's look at the second order derivation so for second order we have that one over the concentration of a at time t is equal to plus kt plus one over a zero and remember at half-life the concentration of a at time t is going to equal one half of the concentration of a zero so let's plug that in and and see what we get so in the case of that we're going to plug in that we have one over one half a zero is going to equal k times t one half plus one over a zero and so if we fix this and correct it for the one half being on the bottom really what that is is we get we can sort of resummarize this as two over a zero because remember one over one over is just you put the thing on top so this is going to give us 2 over a0 times k t1 half plus 1 over a0. And all I did there was just reconfigure that left uh, that left side. That's all I did, just to, to make that make sense. So if we bring the uh, a0 over, so if we subtract 1 over a0, we get uh, on the left, and we subtract 1 over a0. Uh, on, I'm sorry, if we subtract it from the right to the and on the left, we get 2 over a0 minus 1 over a0 is equal to kt one half and so this gives us 1 over a0 is equal to kt one half and then finally we can um, move that over we can move the k over from both sides and so what we get for a half-life equation we get t one half is equal to 1 over k times the concentration of a0 and the important thing here is that the half-life does depend on concentration of a0. And we're going to see the same thing for the zeroth order. I'm not going to derive the zeroth order. You guys can do that on your own or take a look at it on the sheet. I will show you the equation for it just so that you have it in your, um, in your toolkit. We'll look at that in just a second. But what we see here, though, is that the concentration of T1 half does depend on the concentration of A0. So if you start with one molar, 
the amount of time it takes to get to one half of that one molar is going to be different than if you start with two molar. If you start with two molar, you're going to get a different half-life. So that is something that's unique to um, the half-life of the second order. And actually, it turns out that the zeroth order also has a zero in it as well. So the only one that's independent of a zero is the first order, and that does make it special. So let's fill in the rest of our chart. Okay, so we're going to go back to our chart that we created in the last video, and now we're going to fill in the final piece, which is the half-life. So for the half-life of the zeroth order, t1 half, if you do the derivation where you plug in a0 over 2, you, can de you, de you derive an equation for t1 half that is the concentration of a0 divided by 2k is equal to t1 half. So again, you see that the a0 is in there. So when you're doing, when you're doing calculations with the half-life, you, you're going to notice that the half-life will change as the initial concentration changes with zeroth order. With the first order, we have that t1 half is equal to ln of 2 over k. So this one is independent of the initial concentration. And then finally, for we, the half-life of the second order, we get that the t1 half is equal to 1 over k times a0. And so again, you do not need to know how these are derived. What you need to know is what they are, and you have to understand that last talking point about um, how whether or not the concentration of A0 affects it. So you have to understand the difference between first order and the other two uh, and why that's important. The example of this that we have is the isomerization of cyclopropane to propylene. Uh, it, and it says this is first order in cyclopropane and first order overall. So this is basically a first order equation. The rate constant for this reaction is 9.2 seconds to the minus 1 at 1,000 degrees C. So it says calculate T1 half for this reaction. So this is going to be a relatively straightforward plug and chug type question. Um, so we know that because it's first order, the first thing that we're going to do is we got to we got to recognize what the reaction is here. So it's first order with respect to, cy to cyclopropane, and it's first order overall. So we know that our equation is going to be T one half is equal to the ln of two over k, and it says that the rate constant is nine point two seconds to the minus one at one thousand degrees Celsius. So it says calculate T one half. So what we're going to do is we're going to plug in ln of 2 over 9.2 seconds to the minus 1, and we're going to do our, our calculation. And what we get for this is 0 0.075 seconds. What you'll notice is that the units always work out. So in this case, the bottom has units of seconds to the minus 1, and the top has, and the top has no units. So this gives us 0 0.075 seconds. Okay, so let's look at the second part of this, which is how long will it take for the reaction to proceed from 50% A0 to 25% A0. So now you might be tempted to take out the integrated rate law and start working with that, but you actually don't have to. What you notice is that, in essence, we have a couple of different half-lives, and this is just an example of a half-life, right? If we're going from 50% to 25%, that's one half of the initial concentration. We're going from 50% to 25 is just one half the initial concentration. So if you think about it, we have the first half-life, that's 100% to 50%. That's going to represent one half-life. The second half-life is going to be 50% to 25%. We did this on the graph. That's going to be a half-life. And then the third is going to be 25% uh, to 12.5%. And that's going to be another half-life. So in this case, this is simply the answer for this is just 0 0.075 seconds because this represents one half-life. We're halving the concentration. So if this said from 60% to 30%, it would be the same answer, or from 70% to 35%. If you're halving it, you're going, from, um, you're going to be one half-life. Now let's just do an interesting thing. Let's just, let's just say that this problem said um, that you're going from 100 to 25%. So let's just say that the problem said 100% to 25% and it's first order. Again, you can only do this with first order because it will make a difference with, in the other ones, it makes it, the concentration of A0 makes a difference. So you can't do this for the other ones, only for the first order. So in this case, you'll notice we have two half-lives. So we have our first, which is going to be the 100% to the 50%. So that's going to be 0 0.075 seconds. And then we have 50% to the 
So in this case, that's going to be another 0 0.075 seconds. So to go from 100 to 25%, we have to add these two up, and we get 0 0.15 seconds total for the two half-lives. So that would be if we were going from 100 to 25% or doing more than one half-life.